Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I'm one of the new co-presidents of KBS this year. So with the coming into the semester, we wanted to thank all of our viewers and our supporters. We really appreciate all the feedback and all the support that you guys give us. And we hope that you guys are truly enjoying all the topics that we're talking about and learning about new organizations on campus. We also want to give a special thank you to our new members as well. We really appreciate your patience and support as we and Nina are still learning how to adjust to everything. Um, our viewers should really watch out for a new podcast coming out in the next few weeks where our new members just talk to each other about their experience in KBS and as well as um, like their school lives and whatever. Um, in this week's podcast, we're going to be talking to Lambda Phi Epsilon and Phi Up the Sky about their upcoming event, November care packages, and also we really got into a nice conversation about um, breaking the stigma behind feminine care and like um, mental health within men. So yeah, see you guys next week. <laughs> yeah, my name is Sean DiPiano. Um, I'm a finance major and I'm representing Lane Defy Epsilon. Uh, my name is Nicholas Dang. Uh, I'm a history major. I'm a fourth year, and I'm brother of Lambda Phi Epsilon. Um, um, oh, no, yeah, we go ahead, Tag. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, yes. uh, my name is Tag Cson. Um, I represent Lambda Phi Epsilon. The major is air transportation. Um, hi, my name is Quinn Tai. I am a uh, junior pharmaceutical science major, pre-med track, um, and I, I'm a brother of Phi Delta Psi. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Chow. I'm a second year finance major, and I'm also a brother of Pi Delta Psi. Um, so you guys can start explaining what Movember is, why it's an important to you, and like just give a general idea of what it is. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I can start. Um, so what Movember is, is kind of bringing awareness to um, what it means to be a man and how stereotypes and how like people's views have really, like really changed that. Um, not change it, but like redefined it. Um, I think it's also a celebration of bringing more awareness for um, men's physical and mental wellness. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on too. So anyone else want to add anything or is that it? Uh, I'm, I'm going to add on a little bit. Um, a lot of the thing or the main points of the month are to raise awareness for men's uh, mental health issue for prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and uh, men's suicide. So those are like the main topics that it's around. So obviously those touch on uh, mental health and stuff like that. So we'll trans transition into the next topic. So um, what are the standards of being a man growing up, especially like, I don't know if you guys want to share, but like your personal experiences and maybe just general stereotypes? Um, I mean, from what from when I was growing up, I was a part of like a huge Vietnamese family. So and there was like, there was no like, there's no, um, I guess like no barriers when like people were um, like teasing each other. Like my my uncle and my, my, on my dad's side, I was always like they've always they had no filter when teasing people and they're always like you, they should they, they expected us to like take it and just be like and roll with the, go with the flow so like it's kind of just like suppressing like being like constantly teased or like i could go to family function the first thing that they would laugh at is like i was skinny or was like out of shape or something and then you're just expecting to me like don't complain just take it and just like suppress like all the um all the teasing that we've done for you yeah it's like a similar story for me like growing up in an asian household is pretty stressful i'm pretty sure everyone can like relate to that um so like anytime you're like feeling down or like, you're like trying to like cry or whatever it's uh like pretty frowned upon your family's like you're a man you're not supposed to cry or whatever and i'd be like oh man that it sucks so yeah that's like the emotional aspect of uh like being a dude i guess uh, I definitely relate to what Quinn said because what's it when I was younger um I was definitely like the fat kid of the family so when like th like my uh when I would go to family gatherings and my like grandparents would see me they're like oh hi fat so <laughs> I was just like okay and there's definitely like same way there's like the expectation that like you don't talk back or like you don't say anything about it because yep. they're like, your elders you know you're not supposed to say anything about it but I was just like what the heck <laughs> I'm just I'm just here to visit y'all say hi they stop that for you? I still get called skinny when I come home. <laughs> it hasn't it hasn't stopped. Yeah, it should have for me. I was like pretty a little bit overweight like the past couple of years.
series and it has to be like, oh wow. What a fatty, I'm like, damn. That's not fun. That's not fun. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Like growing up, especially with, you know, Filipino household, they always call me Tabat Choy. That's a uh, Tagalog for uh, pretty much fat. So I heard that pretty often. Um, but I mean, in a way, it kind of like, kind of helped me like just get over that and uh, got used to it. So you know, it's, just, it's, just, uh, it's just how we feel about that. Uh, I guess for me, yeah, I can definitely relate to like uh, what Kevin said as well. Um, about like feeling like you need to like you can't talk back and stuff like that and you really like repress yourself um for me like i grew up i'm i'm the oldest so i don't really like have anyone to like lead or like follow and then my parents were always like out and stuff so honestly like my expectations wasn't really there it wasn't really defined for me so i don't know if that's a good or bad thing but it's definitely like more free so. do you guys think like it's gotten better since you've gotten older like has anything necessarily changed since you've gotten older yeah for me right like i guess like now that i've gone to college my parents have realized that oh we don't have like a lot of time with them anymore so like they're nicer and a lot more like media and stuff and I'm like wow this is a nice change of pace for once and i can like go home and like all right my parents are pretty nice people it's just growing up i know they want the best for me but now it's like i'm an adult now i gotta do what i feel is best for me uh i feel like like growing up that way um i definitely developed like a thicker skin towards like whenever anybody would criticize me if that makes sense like i'm a lot more willing to like completely disregard criticism and i feel like that's not necessarily like a good thing i feel like having a super like thick skin has not necessarily like the, been the best thing because then you don't really like begin to take criticism well yeah, I'll second Nick on that. I, I I feel like I've also developed like a thick skin towards the, like um, just like all the teasing that came around from like my household, and then like another whole story is just like growing up in a largely like um, white community and just like being like one of the very few Asians around. So I, I had to grow, develop thick skin there. But it's like to be honest, it hasn't really changed. The 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 the, 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 the stuff has been the same. Like I just went home this weekend. And this is a lot of, like, my family, this is the first time the family saw my what, orange hair. So, um, it was a lot of mixed reviews on that, mm -hmm. on that front. So, but, uh, yeah, it's it's all the same. And they, they don't really care. They just, it's, we all we all pretty much are on the same mutual understanding that's kind of like a joke now. It's not, we don't really take it to heart. So, do you guys have to think there's a difference between mental health within Asian families compared to, like, other um other people? I think that's, I think that'd be true. Yeah, honestly, we were just, um, because in a way, some, I mean, my parents, they were immigrants. So when they came to America, pretty much they would just work their, they work their butts off every day. And when they come home, we, they would, you know, we would be there for them, but in a way they wouldn't be there for us. I mean, because they, you know, they've been working all day, so we couldn't really talk like that. Um, I think uh, the thick skin kind of plays in a way, but at the same time, you know, works out. Yeah, I would say I would say so. For from my experience as well, it's like we don't really talk about mental health. Like it was really never there. Like almost like that invisible illness or invisible disease, um, and like you're kind of expected to take care of it on your own, even if like you don't know what that means. Um, and like the idea of self-care and stuff, like we're never really introduced for me anyway, until probably like college, uh, like trying to like treat yourself a lot more and putting more emphasis on yourself over others, so. Yeah, like going off of um, talking, uh, Sean said, it's like, I relate to talk story a lot because like my parents were refugees of the Vietnam War. So they came over with like nothing, working in the restaurant business every day. They'd study there, work there since they were like children. So they they weren't they always had the impression like they we didn't they didn't really know how to talk to like me and my like my, my generation a lot more. They just like it was a lot of 
expectation and high standards. Like if they could do it, then we most certainly can. It's like the goal to succeed. And then like the expectation that when we succeed, we, um, we go back and help them. So uh, yeah, it was like, it was mainly like a lot of my childhood, like LaShawn said, it was basically like appeasing them, just being like the best in my sport, which was like tennis and always getting the best grades. But then yeah, I like tore a lot towards like college. It, it kind of like settled down on the standards because I was like growing up and becoming more of an adult. And they were kind of knowing that I want these like, standards for myself. They don't have to impose it on me so much. So yeah, things got a lot better. Uh, just bouncing off what Quinn also said, it's like, yeah, my parents were also immigrants. So I can see from their standpoint is like, they're coming into like a new place with no guidance or anything like that. No one saw them, hey, like you're doing a good job or anything like that. So I feel like that same expectation was placed on me. Like me being a first generation college student, as well as like a first generation military stu student. I feel like my parents don't really like say thank you or like you're doing a good job or anything like that. It's more like a silent nod of approval or like, yeah. So I think like they don't realize it's affecting your mental well or wellness um, because they've experienced that same issue where when they were immigrating here, no one was there to like guide them or like give them like applause or anything like that. So, Do you guys think that like, say when you guys, if the possibility happens, like you guys end up having children of your own, do you think you would have those same expectations and standards for your own children? Cause that's like what you grew up with. Or is there something you would do to change that? Like knowing that you went through this, that you would change a certain aspect of how you would treat your own children. Um, I guess for me, uh, like not gonna lie, I, I feel like I would have a really hard time disciplining uh, my children if I ever had any. Uh, just because like growing up, I like received like, it was hard to get love from my parents and I understand how it felt. Um, like, I wouldn't want, like, my kid to go through that as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely, like, I would be more warm and, like, opening to whatever they're, what's happening in their lives. Uh, just, like, make sure that they're safe, make sure that they're, like, emotionally stable, they're doing well in, like, other areas of life besides, like, school. So, that's uh, my key takeaways. Yeah, I can, I can agree to that as well. It's, like, for me, like the experiences I am getting, it's like very intense. Like I feel like everything's first time, everything's like new, no one's really gone through this in my family or household. So I'm starting to experience that same sense that they were experiencing. So I'm like, if I can do this, like my kids can do this too. Or like, if I can do this, like someone I'm mentoring can do this too. But then I realized like, that's the same mentality my parents had. And that's why like, I'm like this. So now that I'm more aware, I feel like in the future, just because my experiences were like this extreme and it was hard and I went through it it doesn't mean like someone else's experience no matter like if I feel like that's smaller than mine I shouldn't devalue their experience if they are struggling like that is something that they're experiencing that's their perspective and I should respect that so I think that's something that I've started to develop like understanding where my parents' thought process is and where I want to take my thought process and being more open to someone else's perspective of how intense the situation is. So I think I definitely changed that a lot when I'm, when I have kids, I don't have any kids right now. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, I feel like, like with the prospect of having kids, there's a lot to understand about like your own upbringing. Like, uh, whereas like, I think Sean and Tag are like the oldest siblings. Like I'm the youngest of three brothers. So like, when it came to me, my parents were definitely like tired of parenting. Like by the time they were like, your older brothers, they're doing too much. They're, <laughs> they like always need to be checked over. And I think like, whereas um, they definitely got like the more strict like tiger parent upbringing. I didn't really get a lot of that. A lot of it was more up to whatever I wanted to do in terms of like studying, in terms of like what I was interested in. And I both see I both see the good and the bad, I feel like, of both ways of parenting. Like, I think, obviously, I got to OSU. I got to do, like, a lot of amazing things. Um, but I, like, look at the career path that my brothers took and, like, how Tiger Parenting kind of affected them and, like, gave them, like, a very, a very real drive to, like, do what they want to do and be good at what they're doing. 
So I feel like it's hard to say. Um, th there are definitely like some aspects I would say that I would apply from like the tiger parenting mentality that I do think like are very valid. Like there's like certain, there's definitely certain places to like push your children to like go get interested in, if that makes sense. Uh, just to pass on with them, have you seen the one, like, I think it was a couple of years ago where I think, like, it was a Tiger Parent article in Sun Magazine, and uh, it was, like, one of the world famous violinists, and she was, like, yeah, when I was a kid, and I, like, failed to practice, like, an hour or something, I would just, like, she would just make me sit outside and not eat dinner for the night until I practice more. I was, like, oh, my God, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, when it comes to mental health and raising kids, um, I like to back what Nicholas said. Uh, he said he was the youngest and I was, and I was the oldest. But in a way, um, you know, growing up, I didn't really find, well, my parents never really taught me anything about mental health. And so in, the, in a way, I had to teach myself that. And there's got to be, I feel like there's got to be a balance. So... Um, I feel like if I did have a kid right now, I'd want to make sure that he's all right. I want to make sure, you know, check on him every day. Um, but at the same time, I also want him to learn from his, his, his experience without being too strict. Does that make sense? Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was also in Nick's position where I was the youngest of like my older brother. And a lot of the times when I was growing up, it was mainly, I was just the one that did everything right. But in actuality, it was just the fact that my parents were like being all tiger on him. And it was scaring me to the point where I, I, I felt, I basically like fell in line with what they wanted. So I was, they didn't really like t target me as much as my older brother because he had so many expectations. But as soon as he moved out of the house and he was out of their view, then like they, they started to tiger me a little more, and they and they do a little bit now, but it's it's not so bad. But uh, yeah, I feel like um, like the 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 goal is the same. I would say like when I'm raising my children, like my parents raised me, it's just like I want them to succeed, live a happy like comfortable life, and just um, yeah, do like love what they do. But I feel like like the way that my parents were like communicated to by my grandparents being in the restaurant restaurant business, especially like they weren't able to have a lot of communication. So it's kind of just like the, like the face, like the face value, just like the standards. And they couldn't really talk like on a deeper level. So, yeah, but I feel that, um, like I want, I'll, I'd have the same intent that my parents had on me. Just like, like, like the nagging, I feel like I can understand from their perspective. It's just like, they really like love and care for me and just want to make sure I'm like living the best I can. So I feel like I'd, I do the same for my children, but uh, I feel like I have like more perspective where I can actually like, communicate with them on a, like a deeper level rather than just asking them like standards like, are you eating? How's your grades? How are you doing in school? Are you are you cleaning your room? Such like stuff like that. <laughs> so what are you guys doing to like help your mental health? Like now that you know. Yeah. how to take care of it since you didn't grow up knowing how to do it but now that you're older you probably have experienced it at, in some way shape or form so since you're here now how have you dealt with it uh yeah so like the way i've dealt with it is more of like taking time myself as well as like i'm now finally understanding college how to like like actually lean upon other people like and talk to other people about my problems rather than just shouldering everything on my own uh which was really like expedited when i joined like pilot to Psy, where i could i really felt i could lean on everyone and talk to them comfortably about my like the issues i had or the stresses i was dealing with i didn't feel like i would be embarrassed or anything so it was it's the the most important thing for me was like having a support actually like talking out with other people because sometimes like i know i'm like i can be a pretty pessimistic person so i can make things out worse than they are but, uh, and also just like taking time for myself instead of like, like instead of like staying in like inside all day and watching these online lectures, like it's been beautiful in the fall. So I take a bunch of bike rides. I go work out, get some fresh air, talk to people instead of just drilling myself in school and just being more like cognizant of like how I'm feeling. Yeah, it's like along the same lines for me too. Um, just like coming to college, it was like a whole new experience for me, and it kind of like rocked me a bit my first year. Um, so I didn't really know what I was doing a lot. It was hard to like balance my time, 
and uh, it kind of like it took a toll on my mental health. Um, but I guess like the second year, uh, or like this semester, I guess, uh, like I was really invested in just like making sure that everything is like playing out pretty well, making sure I'm having time to like uh, like enjoy what I want to do. Um, and then yeah, what like comes down just like learning how to trust others, um, and knowing that like when I like join PDSI, it's just like a, a community that like I can trust and like. If there's any problem that like, I have or I need um, like, any help with, I can just go to them and be like, uh, like explain my problems, and I know that someone's going to be there to help me with it. Like Kevin, I would say like yeah, like my first semester, my first year definitely like hit me. Um, I think that's when I hit a wall where I was like, yeah, I'm not okay, and I actually like I end up joining the military. Uh, my second semester and that was like almost like an overnight decision i got an email from a recruiter and then it said like you can get all all, all these benefits and then i signed literally the next week just because like i was like man i need to get away and like really think about like what i actually wanted to so now like after the military i took a complete one year uh off from school like it gave me a, a lot of time to like self um develop also think about like what i really wanted in life and stuff like that and <laughs> I think that helped a lot. So when I got back uh, to college, I think what helps me now is like, I talk about it openly. Um, I ask people like, how are they? Um, I really care about people. And then I try to balance that with caring about myself as well. So understanding that balance and having open conversations has really helped me as a person. So I try to do the same for like everyone else, especially with my brothers and um, Lambda Phi Epsilon. So, yeah. Uh, I feel like, our generation has been like afforded a lot of um, benefits that previous generations haven't that like we get to know, well, we have like concepts like uh, taking the test to learn like your love languages, taking tests to learn more about like your personality and really understanding that. I would say like previous to like taking a bunch of those tests, I would have described myself as an introvert, but like after taking those tests, I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely an extrovert. Like in every way, in every matter, I'm definitely an extrovert. And I feel like that's also, like to my own benefit, knowing that like I have this depend this dependable group of guys, and I'm sure the PDCI guys can also attest to it. Like now, having this brotherhood, you have a dependable group of guys that you can always count on to hang out or just like to talk to. And I think that's um, something that's incredibly important and like vital to who I am now. Is just like I know if I'm like having a down day or just like not really in the mood to do anything, I can hit up like Sean, I can hit up Tag, any of my bros, and just be like, hey. Like it's a down day, let's hang out, let's do something. And honestly, probably I could do that with uh, the PD side guys too. You could just hit them up and be like, hey, let's hang out, let's go do something. Um, let's see. Ways to cope. I feel like, especially, how do I say this? Um, so when Sean said he just spontaneously just joined the military, um, I feel like that's pretty relevant because, like, in a way, you kind of want to have a mental like reset. In a way, you wanna you wanna have those chances where you recognize that oh snap I am in trouble, and um, some of the ways that I like to do it to that I like to um, I wouldn't say suppress you know I'd like to think of his mental health as how it is a way of just letting it go if if a thought process you know if a thought to your mind you might as well let it go later on because you don't want it to drag you. So um, some other ways that I like to do is just um, find hobbies that you like to do. Um, I like playing music. Uh, I make beats. That That's honestly, it's pretty therapeutic. It's a lot of fun in my opinion. Um, but I think rewiring your brain to recognize that you may be in trouble is very important because you know you obviously don't want that to drag on you and um having up having people to you know say that you have they have their back um i think that's very important too um just uh just for them to filter and interact with each other you know get your mind through well not to have your mind um think to in another direction you know basically yeah, and uh, jumping off what Tag kind of said, I'm not saying join the military. That's definitely like not mental <laughs> health or anything like that. Yeah. But I think what the military has done is given me that space to think. And yeah. I think 
it's really relative now with COVID. I think everyone's been getting a lot of time to think. So hopefully it's been for the best. Yeah. What would you, oh, wait. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> no, Thank go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just like a, yeah, just the idea of like a mental reset because honestly, I'll like joining kind of Pilot Society for me it was kind of like a mental reset because I joined I crossed like in the fall semester of my sophomore year and then my freshman year even though I came from a pretty uh, rigorous high school so my first semester of freshman year was super easy for me I felt but then I got really overconfident and then my sec second semester I I tanked really hard and I was like being so overconfident I got into like I like stuck in my own Xbox and everything and it just went downhill for the whole semester. Cause um, I get pretty addicted to some things. And like, for example, I was, I played a lot of uh, FIFA, which is like a soccer game. And I got, and it was like, I, I'd spent hours at home, not studying and just playing games. So I felt like, and I just kept dragging myself in the wrong direction. And then I joined PDSI. And the first thing, the point is like, this is not good for you. And this is not good for your mental health nor anything you're doing. So it was just a good reset. And I was like, Maybe I have had people to critique me in a positive manner and just saying like, have their, and like actually care for me and saying, this isn't healthy. You should be doing something else. This isn't making you happy. I can tell, even though you think it is, it's not. So then say like you realize, you know, like after midterm season, everyone's like down in the dumps waiting for their grades to come back. So for me personally, I'm always like, as soon as my midterms are done, I close everything and I don't want to look at anything that has to do with school. And cool. like the next day I'll like take a day for myself and just like do nothing school related, which is honestly really bad because I get really behind. <laughs> but like for me mentally, I like justify it as like a day where I can like reset for myself and then be better for like that next time. So like what would you guys do to like the ideal self-care day if no school existed and you realized that you were down in the dumps like the week before like what would you do to like in one day like what would you do in that day to help yourself reset uh recently uh i just took an exam and in my in like deep in my heart i knew i was gonna i was definitely gonna bomb this this exam but in the end i got an 82 and mm. and to as my relief uh i got seven dollars in my pocket and went straight to chipotle because <laughs> you know you you, could, you just gotta cheat yourself sometimes you know so and it was beautiful yesterday honestly um so i just ate my chipotle out on my balcony and just you know live in the moment uh just stop stop thinking about it just uh, hope for the best next time and <laughs> make sure you study beforehand. So, yeah, that's how I like to um, cope with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, for me, like what I do usually after exams is I kind of freshen up. So I'll go get a haircut. Um, I'll get my eyebrows done. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'll eat. Yeah, I'll get like fried, like something fried, and then I'd get like something carbonated because like that's my favorite combo. Yeah. Um, and then I usually binge either like anime or K dramas. Those are my go-to. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, I don't talk to anyone because <laughs> I'm like yeah. for me, you know. So that's kind of how I go about it. So I look forward to those things. Uh, oh, okay. I'm a, um, I'd say after like a really hard week of school because I don't really do midterms. That's not it for me. I mostly have like just long papers and stuff to do. So like after I finish a paper, I'll normally like, uh, I'll normally like plan and like cook out like a really nice meal for like me and my roommates or like me and my friends just to do that. Just because like I'm a very giving person. What's it? Give uh, giving gifts or something is one of my biggest um love languages so I'll like go out I'll like go buy all the ingredients plan something really cool to make and just like cook something really cool just because why not you know it's a good time treat myself treat everybody else yeah yeah I guess uh for me it's so much like what Sean said my ideal day uh would like preferably be getting like my hair done like a full like 
full spa day, just like treat myself, everything, like massages, uh, like the whole, the whole shebang. Um, but I guess like for right now, what I do normally to like just de-stress is I like, uh, I recently started going to the gym and it's like been super helpful just like get my mind off of things. Like I can just focus on uh, like working on my body uh, and like loving myself, uh, which is why I like been really fond of the gym lately. Um, so yeah, waking up early, uh, de-stressing, uh, going home, like making food, just relaxing, uh, and, like playing games is like what I do right now. Yeah, so um, I usually don't cope very well for the first initial couple hours afterwards. I go into a very high level of panic where I'm like calculating the grades that I have to get through every assignment up until the final and just making sure I can get a 93 or something ridiculous. And then I go, then I start freaking out like, am I going to get into med school or not? Is this going all right? And then everything tumbles down. And then I just like stop at 12 o'clock. I stop crying or like panicking. And I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. So I go to sleep. And then I'd probably like, uh, I usually just like, I wake up really late and, just, and then just have a good night's sleep. Um, and then I'll try to just get outside and do something. Or, and then most importantly, just like hang out with other people. Cause during midterm time, I usually like shut myself from the outside just to get my studying done. And then it's just a nice breath of fresh air to just talk to my brothers or just my friends and just, just play video games or just go work out or play tennis or something. Yeah. So would you guys think that like you guys do anything that is characterized as like feminine care? Um, for me, uh, I started using like facial care stuff. So like, um, like salicy is it salicylic acid? So, so, yeah, whatever the acid that you help clean like blackheads and pimples and whatnot, uh, like the, all the facial care stuff I started using. Uh, I started getting my eyebrows done. Uh, not like consistently, but like just anytime I was free, like last semester, and then like just now, like over the summer too. Uh, I don't really see a lot of dudes doing that stuff, so I guess that's like feminine, feminine care. I can relate to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like all of the above. Um, I think like eyebrows for guys has been like, it's a it's definitely like refreshing it. Like I'm trying to get a lot of bros into it. I actually have gotten at least three friends, three guy friends doing their eyebrows. And when they come out, it's like, man, I'm a new guy. <laughs> like they, it's a different feeling and then they get addicted to it. So oh, uh, I nice. definitely think, yeah, <laughs> definitely think that's like one of my most feminine points of, yeah, if you call that feminine. Um, and then one of my biggest things is like when I'm going on like military trips, like I pack a whole lot of skincare stuff because like I don't have good genetics. Like honestly, like my skin's not that great. So like when I'm with a bunch of like older guys and like especially like predominantly like white um area and like I'm the only Asian too. So like when they see like me like already different and then they see like my bag of goods, it's like pink, I don't even know what other different colors of skincare, but like when they see my bag and then they I look at theirs it's like a bar of soap and that's it. I'm like, man, <laughs> we're at the right place right now. <laughs> so yeah, definitely like uh, a lot of people, and especially in the military, see me as like feminine, just because like I bring so many things to take care of my skin, take care of myself. Um, and at first, like it's very uncomfortable, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, I gotta do what what I gotta do. So. I think eyebrows are essential. Um, usually, like. I would grow like a unibrow like almost all the time. So, you know, I just pick on it. Uh, but yeah, skincare, I feel like self-care is probably the most important for everybody. And um, I feel like everybody should take a minute to take care of themselves, wash their face, you know, use, use the right soaps. Because, um, you know, uh, cleanliness is closely to godliness. Is that how it's said? So, yeah, as long as, as long as you stay clean, you know. You should be good. Man, you guys keep talking about getting your eyebrows done. This sounds super tempting now. Oh, it's oh, fun, man. Bro. Kevin, you, you got to get gotta, me. Look, this you sounds, gotta, so, you gotta, you gotta this sounds right. so good. You gotta Kevin, right. you got to take them, man. <laughs> take the <laughs> bro right there. <laughs> I'm just trying to show. I've been asking, and I'm like, nah, I'm not for you. I don't know where to go. I'm like, okay. Take me, Kevin. Tell me where to go. So, or anyone. Everyone. <laughs> it's everyone. crazy. Everyone seems to know. Tell me, please. Well, Tell me the secret. 
I don't really get my eyebrows done from like a friend of mine. And, and she just plucks my eyebrows. So I never got them like threaded or anything. But plucking them kind of hurts. Uh, okay, no, it really hurts. Hey, <laughs> no, go through it. It's so painful, bro. It's so painful. Yeah, but I mean, if you get through it, you're like, wow, new person. It, it's it's whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just other than being super excited to try out uh, getting my eyebrows done. Um, I don't know if this is like, I, I, I'm not sure if people would consider it men, like feminine care, but I've always been a big fan of like massages. Yes, because like I, I play a lot of tennis and I get a lot of like injuries just like through like muscle straining and such. So yeah, my parents and like my whole family was a big proponent of massages and even acupuncture. So, it was, and then it was just like every weekend I just go in and just, it just sit there and it's like a nice comfortable room and just not, it pretty, pretty much me thinking of absolutely nothing. And I just like, most of the time I just fall asleep and then I wake up and I'm like, I feel so free. And I'm just like, I'm like a new, whole new person. I'm like flying through the air. It just feels really nice. And then, yeah. Other than that, I just like, I do a lot of like, like facial care, just like even like stuff that my mom and like my family was just like, like advertised for me just like like always being like a good like taking good care of yourself and your skin and like my hair and such especially after like this orange hair and getting my hair bleached it was a rough time but uh i i had it i started i it's, it's all good now so i because i took care of it but yeah just uh just the simple stuff and i just love massages and i want to get my eyebrows done this sounds great <laughs> uh, okay, you gotta get that slit yeah. Oh. <laughs> Gotta get that little slit. Wait, Quinn, are you in Columbus right now? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm so, cool. so pretty much like every eyebrow place, they do your first time free. So, if you want to get like five, <laughs> free ones, so, is it five different. I am ones? a I am a big <laughs> proponent of free things. <laughs> but yeah, I can suggest you mine later. Yeah. Yes. Free. It can be free. Free. I also think what's uh, important is also cutting your nails because like. A lot of guys, well, not I wouldn't say a lot of guys. Most most guys don't recognize they have dirt underneath their nails, and I think it's kind of gross that they don't recognize it. And like sometimes their nails will be too long, so like they just don't like. And if they're like if their hand nails are too long, their toenails are probably <laughs> just like just maybe a little longer. You know what I'm saying? So like, and can you imagine the amount of dirt and like. <laughs> And like scruff inside, like the sock, the sock. Uh, all right, all right, bro. No, keep so going, keep very, going. I agree. No, no, it's cool, bro. It's cool. It's very agree. important. <laughs> you take care of that. You take care of yourself underneath, underneath the. You know, you gotta get underneath the nails and everything. You know, it's, uh, it's very important. Well, I don't know if anyone else has this, but like my nails go back like pretty fast. Like once I cut mm. them after a few days, it's already like it's starting to grow. I'm like. I, I want to take care of them, but it's such a struggle because it's like I have to do it almost every other day to like keep them nice. So I just like let them grow out a bit and then I like cut them and buy them. Um, so yeah. So yeah. I don't know if anyone else has like fast growing nails, or that's just me. Um, I I I like cut my nails almost like every week. That's it. So yeah, pretty much like that. So what are Lambdas and PSI doing to like raise awareness to like everything we've been talking about today? What do you guys want to go? Yeah, I, I can go. Yeah, I can go. Um, okay. So we're actually doing an event. It's a care package event. So the main idea of it is kind of um, we're making kits for uh, men, honestly, anyone, but it compromises to like skincare stuff. Um, face masks, nail filers, buffers, and emphasizing that buffer and stuff like that. So Tag can definitely advocate for this. Um, guys need that. Uh, we got moisturizers in there. And then we're adding in like flowers and stuff like that. If you want a treat or if you're trying to get it for a significant other that you think they need it, you should get them a flower as well on top of that. Uh, we're adding a baked good as well. So treat yourself to something sweet um, with that care package. And we're having it still run. It's still running right now, so make sure you place your orders. Uh, so thanks to thanks to Jackie and Yuna for having us here on uh, KBS. Um, if you have a, if you want to purchase a care package, which is ten dollars, the correct Venmo would be um, 
to bend the OSUP side, which is a uppercase O, lowercase SU, uppercase PDP, lowercase SI. And if um, you're other, if you're interested in anything else about this event or um, just about our fraternity in general, um, here are the links on the screen. Uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks KBS for having us. Um, once again, our care packages are still open. They're ten dollars each, and they are pretty much like the daily essentials most men need, uh, men or anyone really. Um, feel free to contact me. My name is Sean Dupiano. Um, we'll provide the links below or above or somewhere here. Uh, for any of my contact information, you can always reach out to me regarding the care packages as well as Lambda Phi Epsilon. Um, I can definitely vouch for our fraternity as well as just being in the Greek life. I think it's been a really positive change, especially for me and hopefully all my brothers and hopefully PSI as well, finding their place here, finding that home away from home. So I think it's been cool. So yeah, thanks for having me. I hope you guys really enjoyed that segment. I had a lot of fun talking to the members of PDSI and then the High Epsilon. It was really interesting to hear about their personal experiences. And for me personally, I feel like we had a really, really good conversation about um, men's mental health and breaking the stigma of feminine care. Um, as always, Korean and English subtitles will be available to all our viewers. And don't forget to buy your care packages. And I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thank you.